this tutorial we're going to create a small little game in Scratch called Fish and um, the way that you should work with this tutorial is watch part of it and then pause it and go and do it. Don't try to keep up with the tutorial especially if you're watching on a single screen and you have to switch between two different windows so just take time, pause it, watch what I'm doing and then go and do that. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to delete this cat. We don't need the cat here. I don't know what I just clicked. Uh, we're going to delete that cat and get rid of him. Then we're going to click on new sprite. We're going to choose a sprite from library and we're going to look for the shark sprite. So if we scroll down, there should be a shark sprite somewhere here. There he is, shark. Now if we go up to costumes at the top here, we'll see that the shark has got three different costumes. And for each of these, they're going to be used for a different purpose. So this one, we're going to rename it from shark A to shark swim. This one, we're going to call it shark bite. And this last one, we're going to call shark sick. This is going to help us remember what these costumes are actually for. So we've got swim, bite and sick. Next thing we're going to add in a fish and we'll have to look for the fish. There it is, fish two. We're going to put this fish in and we're going to go to costumes and we'll rename, not here, we'll click on this eye, my mistake, the eye and rename this um, healthy underscore fish. So he's going to be healthy underscore fish and click that little blue arrow. That's what he's called. Lastly, we're going to add another costume and we're going to find that other one, this fish here and click OK, add him in and we're going to rename him, click the I, we're going to rename him poison underscore fish. By underscore, I mean the underscore symbol, don't actually type the word underscore in there. So we've got three different fish here. Now we're going to scale these fish down in size at some stage, but we're not going to do it at the moment. So let's look at actually programming these. Let's set the shark sprite. If we click on the shark, go to costumes and set it to shark swim. That's the first one that we want to do. We're going to get this shark moving. Actually, before we do that, we will add in a stage, a backdrop, and we'll create a backdrop drop from the library, that's this one here. And there is an underwater one somewhere. Outdoors. There it is, underwater. And I'll click OK. That's going to change our background over here to that underwater background. So we'll go back to the shark. And at the top we've got scripts, costumes, sounds. And we're going to switch back to scripts. This is where we actually do all of our programming. The graphics and the, the stuff that we see over here is less important than the things that go on behind the, behind the scenes. So it's really important that we get all the coding working well. And what we need to do now is create some code. So in the events, there's an event here called when the flag is clicked. And this generally this flag usually means start the program. So we'll click when the flag is clicked. We're going to set the size of the shark. We're going to change his size so he's not so big. At the moment he's pretty big. So we're going to go to looks and down here there is one called set size. I'm going to pop that in here. I'm going to change it to about 40%. Now we can test this by hitting the flag. Whoops, and I put it on the fish. That's all right. It can stay on the fish because we want him to be smaller as well. So we'll just do that again on the shark looks set size to 40 percent hit that and the shark's much smaller now okay so that's a good size for our shark otherwise he's way too big we're going to make these fish a little bit smaller later on as well now we want to make it the way the game's going to work is the shark's going to move towards our mouse and when it gets near a fish he's going to eat that fish but we're going to make him move towards the mouse now so what we can do is we can put in this loop that says forever. And anything we put inside here, it's going to repeat forever. It's just going to keep doing it. So one of these things here says point 0.2. I'll 
point towards and we can select mouse pointer. So we're going to make him point towards the mouse pointer. I can test that. You can see that the shark now points towards the mouse pointer. And then we're going to make him move. Now we're going to make him move five steps and hit play. So now he moves towards the mouse pointer. So I can control him with the mouse. However, when it gets to the mouse, it's going to glitch out. So what we need to do is make a way that it can not glitch out. And the reason it's glitching out is because when it gets there, it doesn't really know what's going on. It's at the mouse pointer, but it's still trying to move. So it's kind of just switching between left and right positions. So I'll just stop that. What we want to do is make him move towards the mouse pointer um, up to a certain distance and then just stop. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if he is further away than five pixels from the mouse, move towards it. So we can do that with this if block. If something is true, then do this. In here, we put in a greater than sign. So if something is greater than something else, and we're going to set it to five. So if something is greater than five pixels, we need to type in distance to mouse pointer. So if the distance to the mouse pointer is greater than five, then we're going to move five steps. Okay, so now he gets there, he doesn't glitch out anymore. All right. Now we want to make our fish move around and they're going to move a little bit randomly. So let's click on our fish and we'll change this. We'll change it to 20%. Let's just test that. Yeah, that's a bit better size. It's pretty small now. And we're going to make the fish move fairly randomly. So similar to the other one, if we put a forever loop in, we want him to move forever as long as the game's running. Um, what we're going to do is make him move a certain number of steps. And we'll put this one in. If he's on the edge, bounce. And let's see what happens now. We can see that that fish there, this one down here, is moving. And when he gets to the edge of the screen, he's going to bounce. And he comes back the other way. So that part's working. But now we want him to, every time he does a little step or moves, we want him to turn. Now, if we just make him turn three degrees, he's just going to spin in a circle. In this case, it's a pretty big circle, but you can see he's just going to constantly swim in a circle. So we need to randomize this a little bit, and we can do that uh, with here. So we can pick a random number. The way you plug these in is you get the left-hand side, so this side of whatever it is that you're trying to plug in, and plug it into there. The bit will glow, and it will pop in there. We're going to make him go from negative 10 to 10 degrees. And then when he swims, you can see he's just kind of swimming around a bit randomly. Boop, pops up. It's working pretty well. That seems to work fine. We might need to just go wait 0 0.001 seconds. You might have to play with this on your computer. Uh, 0, 01 seconds, uh, depending on how fast it's going. It's, it's working fine on mine, but there is a bit of lag on mine because I'm recording at the same time. Um, if I wasn't recording, he would have gone really, really fast. So that part there is fine. Now, we're going to have to hold the score. So for our game, we're going to need to be able to control the score. So let's make a variable. And this is going to be called um, my underscore score. Okay, so my underscore score. And click OK. That's going to put the score up in the top left corner. We could call this anything. So we could call it player one score. It doesn't matter what we call it as long as we give it a meaningful name. And we're going to go to the stage object. And on the stage, we're going to make it so whenever we click the flag and reset the game, we're going to set the score to zero. So we're going to set that score to zero. Okay, now we have to figure out a way to actually increase the score. So let's sort that out and we're going to do that on the fish. When the fish gets eaten, then we're going to 
um, make it so that the fish disappears for a bit. He will increase the score and um, will make a sound that happens. We'll also do some other things on the shark to make sure that he opens and closes his mouth, etc. So on this fish, I'll get rid of this weight block. I don't think it's needed, to be honest. Um, we're going to make a check. If, and I can put that in here, if touching shark. So if I'm touching the shark, we're going to play a sound and the sound is going to be pop. Then we're going to hide this fish and we're going to change the score by one. So let's see what happens. I should be able to swim towards the fish. It's changed, the sound did play, um, and the score has gone up to one. Now the fish doesn't come back, so we need to sort that out. We need to make sure we get that fish to come back. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell it to only do something when the uh, fish has been eaten. And I'm gonna create something in events called broadcast a message and wait. So in here, after it hides, I mean before, broadcast a message, new message, and I'm gonna call it shark eating yellow fish and click okay. It broadcasts this message. Then on the fish, I can put, I'll go back to the shark actually. So now the shark knows that if it receives a message, shark eating yellow fish, it's gonna do these things down here. And what I'm gonna make it do is animate slightly. So I'm gonna make it repeat three times. And we go looks, I'm gonna change the color effect by 25. We're going to switch costume to shark bite. We're going to then wait a second. Wait one second. And then switch back to the other costume. Not the sick one. Shark swim. And then at the end, will clear the graphic effects. So it's gonna repeat these things three times and then clear all the graphic effects at the end. So let's hit, um, and also what we'll do is switch costume when the flag is clicked to shark swim. So that way he goes to the swim. I'll just have to bring that other fish back in a minute. Uh, so the, the yellow fish here, however, he needs to know to come back. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Okay, so we've got these things here and it gets a little bit tricky here because we need to randomize the position that this fish comes back at and also how long he comes back. So in this bit, we're going to say wait and we're gonna wait a random amount of time. So anywhere from one to five seconds. Then, we're going to tell him to move to a random position in the room. And we can do that with this block here. Go to, and in here we can type, I'll just have to check the room, it's negative 240 to 240. So negative 240 to 240, that's the X and Y values. And I can see those down here, so X and Y, and I can see the left side of the screen is negative 240 or close to it, and the right side is positive 240. However, with Y, the top of the screen is 180, the bottom of the screen is negative 180. So I'm going to do this, 180 to negative 180, or negative 180 to 180, it won't matter. I'm also then gonna make him point in a random direction so point in direction and pick a random number, one, 
to 360. And then once it's done that, we're going to show. So this is the process. When it touches the shark, it plays a sound, it hides the sprite, it changes the score, it tells the shark or broadcasts this message and then the shark knows what to do when it receives that message. It waits a few seconds, it picks a random position, it points in a random direction, and then it shows up again. Now, I'll just have to make sure that I show that right at the start and I click the flag. So there's my yellow fish. Let's go and eat him. So the shark animated for a bit. That fish has disappeared. And then he's turned up again in that top left corner. Let's see where he turns up this time in the middle of the screen. Okay, so that part's working. That's working fairly well. And some tutorials will tell you to duplicate this fish, but in the new version of Scratch, you don't need to. So actually in a minute, we're going to make it so that it works. Uh, in a sec, we will, actually if you switch to the poison fish, what we're gonna do is tell the poison fish to move basically the same way as the other fish. So if we grab this, and drag it onto the poison fish, the poison fish should now have that code in there as well. However, we're gonna make a few modifications. So we're going to, we're gonna remove my score. We don't wanna increase the score by one. And we're gonna broadcast a different message. This message is gonna be shark poisoned. And we click okay. I'm just going to save this file, uh, download to your computer, and um, what do I want to call it? Fish game. Just in case it seems to be lagging on me, so I don't want it to crash. And then I'm going to go to the shark, and on the shark, I'm going to tell it what to do when it receives that shark poison message. When I receive shark poisoned, I'm going to tell it to play a sound. And I'll have to import a sound. So I'm gonna to go to the shark sound, new sound from library. And I'm gonna look for wolf howl. Here it is. And click okay. Oops, I'll click on that sprite and click okay. So that's imported that. And then I want to play that sound instead. I'm going to go to looks. I'm going to change the color effect by 25. I'm going to set the score back to zero. So we reset the score when he eats a sick fish. Change the costume to sick shark. Wait two seconds. And then clear all graphic effects. Which is that one there. Now when I play the game, there should be two, two fish. That one gives me points and he should appear again in a second. And if I eat the other one, I get sick. Um, and I need to make sure that here, I have to switch the costume back. So switch the costume back to shark swim. Now there's a few other things I want to do. In here, I want to play a chomp sound. So I'm going to go to sounds, import a sound, uh, animal. The chomp sound is a good one. And go back to scripts, and I'm going to put it right at the top. I don't want to put it in there, because it will play it three times and kind of overlap. Uh, I mean, you can try it, it's probably going to be fine. Let's see what happens if I put it in there. You can't hear my... Um, sound there yeah that sounds fine putting it in there so that is okay to put it in there um, lastly duplicating these things here 
So what we're going to do is it's going to start off pretty small. And um, let's just see. There should be an option here. This might take me just a minute. Um, I'm not sure what I'm looking for. We're going to make this game a little bit different. Okay. So when it does this here and goes through here, we're going to create a clone of myself. And we're going to do the same thing with the poison fish as well. So this game's going to get progressively more difficult uh, the, the better you get at it. Now, hopefully, there should be two fish appear. And that one doesn't seem to want to do anything. So we'll grab that other fish. And we'll get rid of that. And we'll go into here and get rid of that. And I just realized how it worked. So let's go to when I start as a clone. And on this one, when I start as a clone. And we're going to copy this whole block. So duplicate and pop that over there. Okay, so that's what it's gonna do when I start as a clone. This one, when I start as a clone, same deal. Duplicate it and pop that over there. Now we need one more thing on both of these. When the flag is clicked and when the flag is clicked, we're gonna put repeat and repeat. 10 times is fine, you can see what it does. Um, we're gonna create a clone of myself and create a clone of myself. Lastly, we'll wanna make a few changes to this here, point in direction. When I start as a clone, we wanna make it point in a random direction. One to 360. And then on the next page, uh, sorry, on the poison fish, when I start as a clone, uh, what did I say? We wanted it to point in a random direction. Point in direction. One to 360. Okay, so they're gonna start there and start swimming out. Okay, so I can eat all these fish, get loads of points for them. If I eat a poison one, I lose my score. Alright, so that game is working. Now the idea of the game is to get the highest score possible. What your challenge is, now that we've got this game working, is to make it so that when you get to 20 points, you win the game and a win thing appears. In order to do that, you're gonna to need to create a new sprite, maybe draw a new sprite that says you win. And when the game starts, so when the flag is clicked, the win thing is gonna be hidden. Then, on the shark, or on the, sorry, on the windscreen, you'll have to have a forever loop, and inside that forever loop, you'll have to have something that is constantly checking the score. So if the score is greater than or equal to 20, then you're gonna show that windscreen. Okay, so think about how you might do that. We've got forever loops here, we've got an if something is greater than. We've looked at hide and show. Uh, so that's your challenge is to complete that. So make it so that when you get to 20 points, it says you win on the screen. You can easily create a new sprite by painting one and the win menu, win thing doesn't have to be great. It could just say you, you win. This is really laggy. Okay, that's fine. Um, you can spend a bit more time on it if you want to. Give it an appropriate name Make sure it's hidden at the start. When the score gets greater than 20 or, or 20 or more, then show this. 